we are looking at the most watched videos that come up when I type in hacking and let's see what we can find. But anyway, we are looking at hacking and the most watched anyway. So we see here some kind of Indian movie about Sid the hacker, which looks awesome. But uh, I guess that doesn't really help us much. So I, as I mentioned, I did a quick look at this first and this video really caught my eye. 15 clear signs your phone was hacked. And didn't we just recently have the uh, Amnesty International report on how they determined that, um, you know, iPhones were infected by Pegasus and so forth. So I thought, what the hell could have Brightside said about how you can detect if your phone was hacked three years ago? I'm a bit curious. We often see our smartphones as our secured digital havens. There is no such device that can't be hacked. To reduce the potential risks, we figured out three things. The ways your phone can be hacked, how to recognize them, and how to protect your phone from hackers. This can only be wrong. <laughs> Let's start with the first important question and see how your phone can be hacked. The easiest way is by taking possession of your phone for a few minutes and installing spy apps. Not really possible because you have a passphrase and all that stuff, right? Installing a spy app is not that simple. Uh, and the spy app, okay, so there are multiple steps. First of all, okay, so the premise is here, you lost access to your phone for a short period of time, let it be minutes, let it even be hours, uh, and somebody gets access to your phone. If it, First of all, if it happens to be unlocked, that's the first big gotcha already. Let's even give them the benefit of the doubt that your phone was unlocked. How do you install a spyware app on it? For Android, you can put it in like developer mode and then you can plug it into a computer and then you can install an APK on it and that's your spyware. So that kind of works, especially if it's unlocked. But if the phone is locked, no chance, except you obviously know the passphrase, which you can shoulder surf and all that kind of jazzy stuff. Um, uh, and on iPhone, you basically cannot install um, any any app. Again, with developer thing, I think you can sign the app and you can have it run and it would then be running for like a week or so before you would have to sign it again, I think, if I remember correctly, on if you have it like connected with uh, stuff. But then also it probably won't work. I, I'm not so sure with the iPhone case because I think you probably need the same... Uh, developer account or something on the phone, maybe. I, I'm not so sure, again. But generally, you can only install apps from the App Store. That's why malware is not that present on phones. You need, if you allow people to easily sideload apps or easily install random apps f from other stores, this is where you get a lot of um, malware. And I kind of... I kind of agree with like the arguments that Apple, for example, has about not allowing third-party stores. Um, on Android, you have third-party stores. And I know that in diff... So we in Germany and the US, we are, we are just used to the Google Play Store and that one is fine. There's still a bit of malware in there, but um, generally, like if you stick to the big apps, the standard apps, you wouldn't, wouldn't get malware through that. But a lot of other countries, either Google, Google services are blocked um, or for other reasons, they have like their own popular uh, third party store. Now it's very questionable who controls like what, how, what apps go in there and so forth. And it's very, very common to uh, find um, backdoored apps in those um, alternative stores. And so for regular users, like, f like for my parents, I do not want them to use third party stores and sideloading app capabilities and whatnot, they would just do it. Just restrict them to the standard store and it's fine. Uh, but uh, yeah. There might be ways to unlock phones, but that costs a lot of money. Yes, of course. So maybe you have exploits or bypasses of lock screens. There have been easy lock screen bypasses that kids found many years ago, but there are also the, the real kind of like exploits or automate automation where robots like type in uh, different passphrases and forth. Like there are lots of techniques how you can do it. 
Um, there are also companies that offer services for unlocking phones. Um, we know that obviously zero days basically exists for any device. So theoretically, I'm sure there exists exploit for every, ex or there exist vulnerabilities uh, for every phone, um, even the current ones where you could unlock a phone. But then we are talking here again, like very valuable and expensive exploits and uh, things your regular user who is watching a 15 clear signs your phone is hacked video will not have to worry about, right? Um, people that need to worry about these kind of devices are traveling in weird countries or like crossing borders and I don't know. Such as Spy Phone app, SpyZ or SpyEra. These apps are basically mobile trackers that record the incoming and outgoing phone. Crap. I hate to advertise these things. This is basically, is this, is this just a hidden advertisement for these spy apps? Why even mention them? This is pissing me off that they mentioned that because these apps are, it's not that some weird dark hacker is using these apps. Like no, like you don't really get hacked by those apps or with those apps. It's your spouse or jealous friend or jealous boyfriend or whatever um, who installs this on your app to track you. Um, th so this is like s these things get abused um, in or get used in abusive relationships to control partners, to surveillance partners and so forth. Um, I guess in the in the common, you know, language like for normal people that is considered hacking as well. It's not quite what we think about hacking, but um, this is a very realistic and issue and threat. Um, and this can obviously done if you, uh, you know, if you share your passcode with your boyfriend, girlfriend, and, and they don't trust you and are malicious, they might install something like that um, on, on your phone. Um, again, it's, it's, it, it requires real access to the phone, like somebody you trust, somebody who has a passcode, somebody who is alone with the phone for a long time. And I also doubt the capabilities for iOS, but uh, for Android, for sure, they can do maybe a bit more. And oftentimes you even need, or you should have a rooted uh, iPhone or a rooted Android. So I don't know, a boyfriend can also get an old iPhone, root the iPhone, so jailbreak it, install the app, and then have a gift for their girlfriend. And now they have a, you know, a phone. Um, uh, yeah, now they have a, a hacked phone, right? Um, there are lots of ways. Anyway, it's these apps get abused a lot, and I don't like that they have to mention them by name because 21 million people watch this, and a small percentage visited them and a small percentage is really motivated to abuse these apps. So I don't like that. Phone calls and text messages. They can track GPS location, online activity and communication going on WhatsApp, Facebook, Viber and Skype. Their creators say these apps can bring peace of mind to parents and help business people monitor their staff. If only it were just that. In reality, these apps are often used by those who don't care about the safety of others. Via an unprotected Wi-Fi network in a cafe or airport. Yes, it's that easy. We all love finding free Wi-Fi spots at airports and restaurants, especially when we travel. Have you ever used free Wi-Fi? Click thumbs up if you have. Well, with the means of public Wi-Fi, you share all your traffic with everyone around you. Think of it next time you want to check in somewhere exotic. It is worth waiting till you reach a more reliable network. This is also a bit outdated. I mean, the video was made in 2017, but still outdated for that time. Um, this was kind of the case uh, 10 years ago uh, because every website still used HTTP. Um, but nowadays, I would say no need to worry. Uh, all the all your apps that you use, WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of them use SSL. Um, all of them have like at least a, a, like check this valid certificate or at least uh, or even have um, 
uh, certificate pinning and so forth. So this is also a threat that those 21 million people that watch a video on Clear Science Your Phone get hacked do not really have to worry about. Normal people use normal, secure social media apps and so forth, like nothing happens. Maybe they ha still use some weird, obscure bank, bank that nowadays, no, I probably by law nowadays no bank anymore uses HTTP, at least in Europe, I, I believe. Uh, yeah, so I would argue and I strongly believe that this is also generally a threat that a normal person really doesn't have to worry about in 2021 and even in 2017. 2010 though, different story. 2010, very scary. When charging your phone via an unknown USB, even in an airplane or a car, there is a risk that all your data will be revealed and transferred. Different smartphones have... Di uh, so some phones, when you plug them in, show up as, you know, mass storage drives so you can uh, move, uh, copy your images. Though I believe, I mean, I'm not an Android user and, and so forth, but I, I think you also need to press I trust this computer uh, for that to happen. So yeah, a, a regular person might accidentally press a button or doesn't know what it means. But uh, just by plugging in, like this shouldn't happen, right? Um, and that's also why it's a good idea. And people used to hate that why phones wouldn't show up at mass storage devices, right? I remember there was a time where people really hated that iPhones or iPods wouldn't show up as like simple mass storage devices where you can put like copy down the photos or put up music onto it. Um, but for that threat here, that that's nice, right? You plug it in and nothing happens because you need iTunes and I don't know, like you need to accept to connect to this computer and all that stuff. So yeah, and again, of course, we all know that the exploits exist, um, like check rain or something for iOS. Um, when, when you plug in, so you could theoretically get owned if you plug it in, but it's again, nothing people that watch 15 clear signs your phone was hacked has to have to worry about. Different security features. So not all of them share the same amount of information when connected to a PC, but they can give away your device name and type, serial number, its manufacturer, operating and file system information and electronic chip ID. That's a lot of it. Wait, what? For are the same amount of information when connected to a PC, but they can give away your device name and type, serial number, its manufacturer, operating and file system information and electronic chip ID. That's actually surprising good info. Like that feels like they kind of like, like what casual person knows that maybe your phone, when you plug it in, communicates with you and maybe it exchanges some information so that they know that it exchanges maybe this kind of information when, you know, before it, like that, that I, I can see that being realistic that this is being transmitted uh, when you plug in an iPhone. I, I don't know the protocol, but I could imagine that, for example, when you plug in an iPhone, that this is theoretically um, communicated with the with the computer. Um, again, is that really information that you really worry about? Like, do you really care about this information? Does this really matter? I would say for people that look for 15 clear signs, your phone is hacked. I, I cannot even imagine for anybody where this is really, where, where this is considered critical private data that is like, shouldn't like, I don't know. I think using your phone that logs into different mobile stations and uh, the central registry of the mobile phone operator knows your rough location just because you use phones is more critical than giving away this kind of information but it's still surprising that this video kind of like mentions stuff like this um, that I didn't expect that D that's a lot of information that can be used against you how how can it used against me 
Yo, bro, I know you. Serial number. I don't know, maybe in a magic show. Like, imagine you go to Vegas and there's a pre-show and, you know, like you wait for the magician to come and you plug in your phone and then they read out the serial number. And then during the show, they say, I can predict your serial numbers. And then they, because they offer like charging ports for phones, like they pick one person out of the 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 room that plugged in their phone and they get asked on stage tell and i i will i can read your read your serial number think of it and i can read your mind and tell the serial number maybe something like this could be done chip id that's a lot of information that can be used against you sms phishing this happens when you receive a message with a link saying that it is for example your bank statement, a money transfer, or your photos. So you click it, download the file, and then reveal all your phone's contents to hackers. Okay, so mentioning phishing is, I think, good advice for regular people. Um, it's, you know, that once everybody is growing up, everybody at some point needs to learn about phishing. So a video that gets 20 million views that tells people that phishing via SMS exists is, I guess, good advice. Um, but that when you click on it and download the file, you give away all your phone's data, that's a little ex exaggeration. Click it, download the file, and then reveal all your phone's contents to hackers. With the help of Signaling System 7, or SS7, used by the majority of telephone stations all over the world, hackers can read your text messages, listen to your phone calls, and track your cell phone locations. But if you're not a celebrity, there's nothing to worry about. You see, there are many ways hackers can mess with your phone. About hack your cell phone locations. Yeah, it's very... so. Okay, I'm also obviously not an expert, but I never directly interacted with SS7 systems myself. But as far as I know, it's easy to read, to query for the location of a person. Anything else is more of like a man in the middle attack, um, I think. I don't think that hackers all over the world can read your text messages and listen to your phone calls. Um, yeah, but tracking your cell phone location, that's kind of, I think that's generally possible. Um, let me think. I had a I had a course on mobile security in university, but was there something about this? Does anybody know if in in some way how this is possible? Top of my head, just creativity creativity ideas. Maybe you you can kind of like do man in the middle. Maybe you can advertise yourself to be a certain phone, and then messages would get routed to you and then you can simply forward those messages so it's kind of like man in the middle maybe something like that is possible um i thought the only people that can grab the cell location is only the cell provider uh yeah but if you are so again i'm not an expert maybe i'm, I'm talking stupid stuff but as far as I understand, if you are inside the SSM network and you act as a provider and you say, I have a call coming in from this person, where is this person right now? Because I need to route this call. They can query the HLR, the home, home location register. No, HLR. Home location register. And that thing, why is there no English article about that? Maybe, maybe it's a different, uh, no. Why is there no English article about that? But it tells you, 
at what a mobile station a phone is registered on. This is how you can like query the position of stuff. It might be possible to do manual with spoofing as a t cell tower, but then you are also not really in the SS7 network. So uh, being a fake base station, um, uh, like an MC catcher or something like that, you are relaying to a real base station again, like you are not really interacting on the SS7 layer. My understanding, this is all stuff I don't really know. But if you're not a celebrity, there's nothing to worry about. You see, there are many ways hackers can mess with your phone. Now it is time to answer the question we all care about. How to recognize that your phone is hacked? Number 15. You find new apps on your phone and you did not install them yourself. Okay, that might be weird. Probably your kid took your phone and installed phone. No. It's fa fun, but it's not a good joke anymore, right? Nobody, that does that even still exist? It's probably your mom took your phone and installed Candy Crush or your kid installing Fortnite or something like this. That's, that's your hacker probably. Sometimes phone manufacturers and service providers can actually install new apps on your phone as you update it. But it is better to be safe than sorry. So you have to make sure the apps are legit. You can Google search them and see what other users or better yet, reliable websites say about the apps. If it was neither the manufacturer nor you who installed the app, it must have been hackers. Number 14, some apps stop working. Uh, did you take tech classes from me? Because I don't have any classes. Just, just a curious question like they used to. While new apps you never installed are doing just fine on your phone, your old apps are in trouble. Something is interfering with their proper functionality and it is most likely some malware on your phone. Number 13. Wait, what happened? I didn't get this. Some apps stop working like they used to. While new apps you never installed are doing just fine on your phone, your old apps are in trouble. Something is interfering with their proper functionality and it is most likely some malware on your phone. The Wait, what? Working like... Does anybody understand this argument? Number 14. Some apps stop working like they used to. While new apps you never installed are doing just fine on your phone, your old apps are in trouble. Something is interfering with their proper functionality, and it is most likely some malware on your phone. Huh? Apps stop working like they used to. Some apps stop working like they used to. While new apps you never installed. Are... While new new apps you never installed. If you never installed them, why do we even talk about them? Are doing just fine on your. They are your just phone. Doing just fine on your phone. Wait, new apps you never installed are doing fine on your phone. That makes no sense to me. Your old apps are in trouble. Your old apps are in trouble? Why? So when, when you say the apps are in trouble, does it mean something is targeting those old apps? Something is interfering with their proper functionality. So something is interfering with the old apps functionality. And it is most likely some malware on your phone. So you have malware on your phone that is interfering with your old apps but the new apps you never installed on your phone that are still on your phone, but you'd never installed them. <laughs> uh, I mean, they pwned something, I guess, I don't know. Number 13, your phone has suddenly started to run out of juice very quickly. 
This is also a bit of fear mongering. Okay, sure, malware in the background could like, run crazy and um, drain your battery, but come on. Phone batteries die, degrade in a year very much. After two years, your phone batteries are pretty much dead. So this advice is like... Your phone has suddenly started to run out of juice very quickly. If you noticed your phone's battery lifespan has become way too short, it must be for a reason. This can happen when there is an unknown app running on your phone. Such apps run in background mode without notice, so you... That's not so easy to run apps in background mode without notice. That's not that easy. You don't even have to start them, but they still take away your phone's energy. Number 12. Your smartphone seems slower than it used to be. We often think slower operation speed is the reason of our phone's old age. In fact, just like shorter battery life, it can be caused by malware running in the background on your 99.999% your low battery and your and your slower running phone is because you installed too many apps and you used the phone just for too long. Phone. Those bad apps transfer data from your phone, so its performance drops a lot. A smartphone is smart, but hackers are sometimes even smarter. That's a good point that uh, a basic app can't drastically use um, battery. Espe you know, malware is not really known for running some 3D rendering on your phone or something. If it's just, even if it's a, a crazy loop querying some data and sending stuff away, there wouldn't be, I, I, I th would expect the phone also to kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know, yeah, uh, you're right probably that you, it's very unlikely that a malware would actually drain a battery. Number 11, your phone gets warm. Your phone gets warm even when you don't make a call or work with it. You are probably used to feeling the warm touch of your communication tool, and you might even like it, especially when it gets cold. But warming up for no reason is not a good sign. Again, it means there is an unknown app making your phone work so hard that it warms up. What if it's a known app that makes, because you use Google Maps or something um, in the background? I, yeah, okay, I mean, they said that if it's, uh, if it's an unknown app, yeah. I mean, basically, they are saying there are indications that things could be running in the background, which I guess if you have malware is generally the case, something is running in the background. But all these symptoms appear, are so typical for normal operation. Maybe apps are being updated in the background. Uh, maybe the operating system is updated, is updating parts in the background. Things like, there are so many reasons why a phone could sl slow down, why battery degrades, why uh, your phone gets warm, that it's really not an indication. Like generally, that, I mean, of course, if you have malware, that those might be symptoms, but even might be, and then it's so much more likely to not be. Number 10, your phone reboots itself, switches off, are they saying because of mining on a phone? Okay, to be fair, if you have a crypto miner malware on a phone, then yeah, sure. That thing will drain your battery. I grant you that. That's true. Dials numbers or starts applications. You might like to believe self-rebooting or dialing numbers is the result of paranormal activity and you're about to call Ghostbusters. Sorry to tell you this, but if it's not a system breakdown, then it could be tapping. Number nine, self reboot dials numbers or starts applications. You yeah, okay, if my phone would start doing that, I would be very suspicious and weirded out what the F is happening. But yeah, I mean, this is advice you can probably give, but nobody will experience that ever, I guess. And it's not an indication for tapping. It may maybe sounds like a terrible phone spy app or something, I don't know. Or you you hit on your phone a lot while it was lagging and then it froze for a moment and then it executed all your clicks or something like this maybe. That's more likely to happen. 
system breakdown, then it could be tapping. Number 9. Unknown phone numbers appear in your recent calls and it costs you. Hackers can proxy through your... I'm sorry to break it to you, but this expensive number on your phone that appeared was your boyfriend using your phone calling some sex hotlines at night. Device to make expensive it. And they just tell you, this was a hacker, it wasn't me. International phone calls. They can also use your infected device to make calls to companies which charge for them. Of course, they don't actually call overseas themselves. They offer this paid service to their customers, so they get profits. Number eight, your phone is sending and receiving strange text messages. Just like unknown numbers in your recent calls, you can find text messages you did not actually send from your phone. It can also happen to your email if you are using it from your phone. If you don't notice it yourself, your friends or colleagues might tell you about it when they receive weird... I guess that's a good advice. If you have actually some malware or, you know, something... <laughs> Oftentimes these accounts are, or your phone is then maybe used to send out other phishing or attack emails and stuff like this. And if you notice them in the outgoing folder or something, you know, that's a good thing to happen. But um, yeah, I don't know. Messages from you. Do not ignore it. Number seven, you cannot switch off your device. As you are trying to switch your device off, it starts opening different apps, increasing. I don't think that this is how you try to shut down your phone. I think you just don't know how to shut off your phone. The lighting and so on. It is very wrong and it is most likely not the manufacturer's fault. That, okay, see, that is like a bullshit fear mongering take. It's not the manufacturer's fault. Most likely, something is hanging, something is crashing, your phone is not responsive or whatnot. Um, and there's just a, pro an, a mistake, an error in the app. So much more likely than some kind of hacker preventing you to shut off your phone. Number six, there are noises or echoes during calls. If you hear noises or echo during calls, and you haven't had them in this location before, it means someone else has access to your phone. They might be tracking your phone and listening to your conversation this very second. To be fair, there are some very weird cross-talking stuff happening on phones. I don't know, does it still happen? I remember as a kid, sometimes suddenly you hear the neighbor or somebody on the phone line as well, but only one person hears it, not your, the person you're talking to. And this also happened some time on mobile phone networks, but now I don't know if it only happens when you call the landline. I know there was some weird stuff going on with old phones. Is this still a thing? I, I, I use, I, I'm not calling people in the, I haven't called people in recent years, so I'm not sure if that's still happening. That's in analog lines, yeah. Wasn't that on landlines? Yeah, I, I assume it's only happening on landlines or when obviously from a phone when you call a, a mobile phone, when you call a landline, then this might happen. Um, yeah, so I guess this can kind of happen, but I doubt this is something hackers can really control in the way how it's mentioned here in this video. So uh, yeah, this doesn't make sense. It's more likely the person you talk to has you on speaker and that's why you are echoing. Number five, websites appear different than before in your mobile browser. It can be a sign that someone has installed malware on your phone. It can be reading your online communication and tracking your activities. It sits somewhere between your browser and the internet and stops the sites from displaying normally. Number four, I mean, this is something that happens on desktop PC more often because again, malware and desktop PC really has, you know, more capabilities. <coughs> but this typical mobile malware stuff <coughs> cannot easily influence um, websites in that way. That would be like going, then would have been a rooted phone with root access or something like this. I don't know. Um, but sh that shouldn't really happen with your standard malware things. 
It sits somewhere between your browser and the internet and stops the sites from displaying normally. Number four, you noticed an increased use of mobile data. If you have a data monitoring app, you can sometimes see your mobile data usage growing way too fast. It can cost extra charges if you pay for a certain amount of traffic per month. And it is one of the signs your phone is not only used by you. Because it's also used by your boyfriend at night watching porn. Or your kid playing Fortnite and watching Minecraft videos. You can also try finding detailed app traffic usage in your phone settings. It tells us exactly how much mobile data each of your apps is using. You recently installed that app from a new source and it is eating your data like crazy? That app could be <coughs> malware. Delete it. Number three, pop-ups start appearing on your device out of nowhere. You probably see it a lot on your computer unless you have a good antivirus software. You are informed that you just want... I'm sorry, this deleted, this delete just reminded me of something. ...and it is eating your data like crazy? That app could be malware. Delete it. Delete it. Remind me of this clip. This Sorry, maybe you need to this. Yep. Trash? Yes, yeah, trash. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. She doesn't know English very well, so she wanted to throw this trash away and ask this cashier if she can <laughs> delete it. Actually, can I show you a... This? Yeah. Sorry, maybe you need to this. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Number three. Pop-ups start appearing on your device out of nowhere. You probably see it a lot on your computer unless you have a good antivirus software. You are informed that you just won the lottery or a new iPhone. Or maybe the pop-up tells you that you have a virus and you need to install this antivirus. That's, you know, the, the true way to do these shitty pop-ups. Um, yeah, antivirus on phones is a little bit of a scam. All you have to do is click one button and it's yours. Such pop-ups on your phone are likely produced by malware. Don't do what they are telling you to do. Number two, emails sent from your phone are blocked by- So it's a bit misleading. These pop-ups, you know, websites can display these things. And so it's, it's not, it's just a shitty website. It doesn't mean you have malware on the phone. Um, it's very unlikely that you have malware on the phone. So yeah, makes no sense. These are, uh, these are all things that are more common or were common on desktop malware because desktop malware can just do a lot more than malicious apps on phones can do. So they just took things that can, like things that malware, but I guess maybe they took like a, a, a 10 clear signs your computer was hacked video and just did the same and added a few mobile specific things on top of it. And that's how they reached 15. I, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's how this video was made. I spam filters. It can be a sign a third party is reading your emails. How? If they Wait, what? Number two, emails sent from your phone are blocked by spam filters. It can be a sign a third... Maybe you're just writing too much bullshit in your emails. Party is reading your emails. How? If they got control over your phone, they could have changed your email configuration to send all your mails via some unauthorized server. Hackers probably have direct access to that server. Serious question. When you are an editor, how do you come up with something like this? Okay, you search for stock photo hacker. You find this, you know, Maybe, maybe this is not even a single stock photo. Maybe this is even two stock photos. You look for hoodie and you look for hacker background. But then how do you come up with photos like adding this face? Direct access to. And this face. To that server. Like. What was the thought behind that? Number one, you can't make calls or they're being dropped. If you experience calls being dropped, the inability to make calls at times when you appear to have good signal strength 
or strange noises occurring during your phone conversations, something may be amiss. Normally, these problems are indicative of technical issues unrelated to a breach. Exactly. Normally, they are just technical issues unrelated to a breach. But that is not always the case. So, if you noticed these symptoms shortly after you took some action that you now regret, you may wish to consider whether you need to take corrective action. Eh? Case. So, if you noticed these symptoms shortly after you took some action that you now regret, Sh you did some action you regret? Oh, I think talking about like you clicked on a weird link or you installed something so you did an action you regret like something like that and then you notice those symptoms then that's an indication you got hacked is that how what they mean you may wish to consider whether you need to take corrective action what should you do if you see any of these signs on your phone try running mobile anti map my face right now do if you see any of these signs on your phone Try running mobile anti-malware software. Do not try running mobile anti-software. Delete all the apps you have not installed. If they are not installed, you cannot delete them. But I mean, I guess they mean delete all the apps. Um, uh, that you don't use anymore. Or I guess you have not installed, like in terms of like you didn't make a conscious decision to install, I guess. I, now I understood, sorry, English language, second language. And unreliable apps eating too much traffic. If it is possible, you can also reset your phone and go back to its original settings. If that does not seem enough to you, consult a professional. Settings. If that does... Just, so when they say the hacking stuff doesn't work, uh, like, you, I don't know, you need to consult a professional and they are not showing a professional stereotypical hacker, but they show a doctor. Are they saying you are delusional and you should go to a mental hospital? not seem enough to you, consult a professional. We all know prevention is better than cure, so here is what you can do to protect your phone from being hacked. If you receive a message with a link and you cannot see the full URL, never open it. If you charge your phone via an unknown computer, when connected, choose only charging. Don't use the remember passwords function. Switch on. Wait, 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 sorry, sorry. I, 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 my brain drifted away. I didn't pay attention. If you receive a message with a link and you cannot see the full URL, never open it. Okay, let's say you see the full URL. Then you should open it. So if you see the full phishing link, the full phishing domain, then you should open it. Dumb advice. If you charge your phone via an unknown computer when connected, Choose only charging. Good advice. Don't use the remember passwords function. Yo, Cyber Warrior Monk, thanks for the sub. Don't use the remember passwords function. Don't use the remember passwords function. That's a first. I've never heard anybody recommending that. Why? Because you get a reset link sent to your email or on your phone or something, and that's bad because if the hacker has your email, they can then access it. Yeah, that makes no sense. Switch off the automatic connection to public Wi-Fi networks. Instead, choose. Yeah, I guess that's still a good thing to do. One more thing about Wi-Fi networks. Avoid networks with suspicious names, such as free internet or Wi-Fi free. Right, because 
an evil attacker would have not the idea to just name the thing in a different way. Maybe like hotel or coffee or something. Choose those which are protected with a password, especially if you are somewhere like a cafe. But yeah, that's good. If, if there's a password, obviously that makes the Wi-Fi a bit better, but still everybody uses SSL, so I consider that threat generally low anyway. Don't make online purchases or fund transfers on public Wi-Fi networks. I would think every bank and every app, like banking app and everything, is all safe on public Wi-Fi network. But I, to be honest with you, I would also feel a bit uneasy maybe doing that. I wouldn't worry with like PayPal, but using my bank's app, I don't know, I would probably feel a bit weird, even though in reality, probably it's all safe. Yo, Drane, Drain, thanks for the second month with Prime. If you use Android, install the reliable antivirus program. Then we have the advice to install antivirus now three times in this video already. Uh, and no, I would not. I, I think antivirus programs are even on desktop where admittedly malware is a lot more complex and can do more stuff and is more scary, so to say. Even there, I find antivirus a bit of a snake oil product, but on a phone, that's for sure a snake oil product. And of course, add a password to your phone. Yeah, add a password to your phone, that's good. And if you're in a relationship, no, you don't have to know the passcode of your boyfriend or girlfriend. Leave everybody some privacy, learn to trust. And yeah, that's important. We hope you found this video you Wait, this video just ended before even the outro kind of was set? Why is that? What the heck? You can grab and pull this out? That was unexpected. I can click and drag this. I just wanted to highlight here because I was I'm like clicking weirdly around. Now I'm a bit curious. Bright side. What is bright side? Our social media, oh, they also do five minutes crafts and so forth. Okay, they are like, they are probably like some kind of crazy content machine. Holy shit, 8.8 .8 billion views. See, I like German regulations. I would have liked to see here now a proper imprint with the company who is behind this. Isn't German regulations without privacy for anybody doing any business online nice? They have like 100 channels with over 100k subscribers. Yeah, I believe that. Read the comments, that's a good point. Oh my God, they, they, those comments are full of fraud and spam. I get those comments so much. I have lots of c rules that maybe are a bit overstepping and a lot of legit comments are blocked automatically as well, but this spam is so rampart. It's everywhere where they advertise some kind of hacker on Instagram or something like that. And you see here, Dan, Dan Techies here. I haven't seen Dan Techies on my channel, I think yet, but um, yeah, this is crazy widespread in the comments. I, I get this for years now. Google still hasn't been able to kind of like get these kind of bot accounts. On. See every account here, uh, every almost every comment is here is even the same even the same person insane that's crazy always look the same one all of these are bot accounts all of these are bot accounts or like stolen accounts or something like that it's crazy and they are they they live for days now see this is not just a new comment it's like five days old you would have expected oh here's a new one mince legends but I, I assume it's all the same people but yeah, it's it's crazy rampart. Uh, I, I I get it a little bit, especially on my Instagram Instagram hacking video. Uh, on other videos, it's a lot rarer. But on that video, I got it also. It's it's not manageable as a YouTuber either. Th th you get daily so many of these. Um, a lot. To be fair, a lot of them are already caught. So 
I still see them in my notification. Then I click on them because I want to report them and delete them for, for spam. And then it already says comment removed. So, okay, to, to give YouTube some credit from, from the spam I receive, I would say 75% is caught by Google and 25% I maybe have to manually do something. But that is after I already use, there, there are some big names that always come up. So I add them to a block list so they don't appear anymore. Do Dove Cyber, there's another one, one week ago. You s see how crazy it is. I'm, we are just scrolling and scrolling. It's Adrian Craig on 1G, a trial was one of its kind. Thank you, sir. Min's legend again. Yeah, that's so. Even even comments where, where I think, oh wait, here's a normal comment. Let's read that one. This is amazing. I got no idea I could access my husband's device. Not until I met Dan Techies on Instagram who helped me gain access into my man's device. Thanks so much. Is there even one legit comment? Well, a normal comment, a normal comment. Does this kind of advertisement even work? I have no clue. But the, the thing is, there are people that do not trust their spouses and um, that want to hack and make surveillance and and like you know get access to the the messages and they don't trust them and so forth very controlling it's very common unfortunately those abusive relationships and when that person reads a comment like this they might lead the, on a path to get scammed i mean they would like to install a spyware but i mean they will get scammed um, there are tons i get, i receive tons and tons of messages of people that apparently lost their account and need to get uh, access to it, or they, um, they forgot their password, their account got hacked apparently, or I don't know, like they have the weirdest reasons why, and they ask me if I can help them to hack an account. So th there's a huge need for them, and every time I write them, do not trust any of these hackers that offer services, it's not possible, but it's people seek out that stuff and so they might fall for the comment like this for sure because people seek out that stuff where else do you go when you are you know non-technical and you want your account hacked because you imagine that that's so simple or something and then you read comments like this you you might trust that let's see that it's still going on oh postnoid a new person that means legend again the fact spyware is so available for this kind of people with abusive relationships is the scariest thing, to be honest. Yeah, it is. There was even one YouTuber a few years ago who did a sponsored segment, like an ad in a video for such an app. I told this person in private, uh, I mean, I shared it publicly that some YouTubers are doing that. I didn't want to tag them, didn't want to cause drama. I told this person in private that why this is not cool and why uh, they should consider deleting it. Um, at first they didn't understand, but actually like a year later or so, this person contacted me again and said they realized now what it means and what impact it has. And uh, I think they deleted it then. Thank God Pegasus is not easy to procure. Yeah, but I mean, for spouses, for controlling and abusive partners, it's also not necessary because you are already in a in a very scary, abusive like relationship dynamic where with a bit of fear or violence, you know, you can easily take a phone, know the passcode, shoulder surf them when they enter it. It's so, as a spouse, it's so easy to do, you know, um, if you live with them together. Um, that's why it's not really necessary to have capabilities like Pegasus. Spyware is a gray area that heavily needs to regulate. Yeah, but it's, because it's a gray area, it will be difficult and maybe impossible to regulate because they don't brand themselves, obviously, as, um, as spyware and monitoring stuff. They brand themselves as, here's an app to, uh, uh, to, as, for the safety of your children. And that is maybe a valid concern. You know, as a parent, I think it's not bad if you give your a child a phone to be safe and you put a, a GPS tracker on your child's phone until a certain age, of course. Um, I, I think that's, as a parent, is absolutely okay for parenting. Um, uh, yeah, maybe like until up to, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not into like child, uh, raising a child, but I, I, I think it could be okay until the age of 14 or something like this, or 12 maybe. Um, 
yeah. Anyway, like they are, they will they are just spreading themselves for all these legit reasons, and of, but of course mainly they get abused. Wouldn't that mean you would also regulate legitimate rats? Yeah. Well, I would say legitimate rats are also bad because usually they also only get abused. But yeah. So yeah, we did that. Cool. 